What's up? What's up? Raise the roof. I've been drinking coffee all goddamn morning. I'm freaking pumped. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of pumped. I need coffee. I had coffee. See? I don't even know what I'm saying. What's up, guys? How you doing? Need a haircut. Someone said infrastructure bills going through right now. I don't even know. <clears throat> Newsflash, guys. They're going to pass it. They got to. They got to do it. What's up, guys? Seven people. What's good? Yo, yo, Dad Master, what's good, man? How you been? What up, Pax? Solid week. Sold week. Solid, sold, whatever. Thoughts on infrastructure bill and impacts on POS and POW change Digibyte? I mean, hey, dude, like, they got to pass infrastructure bill. This is, like, a very common step for the degradation and the collapse of an empire. <clears throat> Look at the Roman Empire. One of the last things they did before their money collapsed was infrastructure spending. It's increased demand for the currency to maintain the empire itself. But it's a, it, it just collapses under its own weight. They got to do it. They're going to do it. Just like they did the, the stimulus. They're, they're trying to pass the infrastructure. It's going to prop up demand for the dollar. But it's diminishing returns. Eventually, we all know what happens. Just go ask central banks why they're reducing their exposure to the dollar and increasing their exposure to the Chinese yuan. Just saying. <clears throat> God damn it. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, no, guys. Horse and shit. 16 people. Wow. But you know what I'm saying? Notice what spurred the first crypto pump, guys. Stimulus. Injection of capital into the economy. More dollars chasing the same amount of scarce assets. Now there's another injection coming, just in a different form and a different name. You saw my four-year cycle video, right? Isn't it funny that another injection of capital is coming? Right when, you know, we might enter, not financial advice, the exponential phase of the market i think it's pretty interesting when you put it like that 19 people was good let's get it mm, i like it man crypto fitter what's good hit the like yeah guys please hit the like this is crypto and coffee i do this every 9 a.m pacific standard time i do another live stream on wednesdays 5 p.m pacific standard time you know how it is we go through some macro charts that's like you know i think of these as like checkpoints How's it going? How's everything looking? Okay. You know, then we get into some altcoins, but we haven't been doing that too much lately. Um, we can get in the news. We don't do a lot, but I know infrastructure is on the people's brains right now. So, yo, DD, happy Sunday. Logo kind of fits the DD, the name DD. Yeah, that was that was the idea. You know, it's just a, a D and an inverse D next to it. Hey, we got some friends up in here. LOL, Oaks T, my sleeper over the past three weeks. I woke up a bit. It woke up a bit this weekend. A lot of things are waking up a bit this weekend, right? Like, like I told you guys, crypto is cyclical. Now, you know, am I speaking prematurely? There's always a chance that I might be, but like I told you, I don't think I am. I pick a direction. I show you my whole thesis, why I think it's going this way over the longer term trend and i'm sticking to it like basically guys my four year cycle video is my is my stance for the rest of the year the rest of the cycle i'm not sitting here this is what i think is going to happen i show you why i think it's going to happen i show you precedent precedent as why i think it's going to happen how this cycle is playing out a lot like 2013 the cycle top was only 4 days away but april 8th the cycle, this cycle topped out mid-cycle high, April 8th. In 2013, the, the mid-cycle high was April 4th. It's not just similar. It's weirdly similar. 23 people was good. Kalua and Crypto, good morning, Dub and the Wolfpack. Derek, it's always a pleasure, man. Cheers. I, I just want to do a cheers real quick, guys. Cheers to all my, my Crypto Warriors. 
for getting this far, for, for not putting up with all that FUD. Crypto haters. I know you guys have people in your friend click. They'd be saying, like, you in that crypto weird shit? You, you doing that? You got people in your family saying, like, why don't you buy some stocks? Why don't you buy some real shit, man? Like, mm, they're about to see. They're about to be humbled. Ah, uh, see what I did there? Be humble. Hey, I like that. First time I'll get to kick back and smoke some coffee on the big screen. Here's here comes the beat. Hey, smoke the coffee. I'm gonna be smoking some coffee. You ain't smoking no coffee. Come on, be real, man. Come on. Come on. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. We're sipping some coffee. Some of my people they puff it. It's okay. Smoke it if you got it. Getting ready to be a DGB millionaire. Dollar bills running all over my face. I'm so freaking ready, y'all. I'm so freaking ready. I'm so ready. I'm so ready for these these new noobs that rush in here and give me their money. <laughs> it's the wolf pack. Get with it. Get out. Come on. There's always someone on the opposite side of the trade. You got to have liquidity to get out. And that's why I tell you guys, you know, just have a plan. Be ready to execute that plan. Execute the plan. <clears throat> and be a better version of yourself in about four to five months. It's a Goku cup. He went through the, the dishwasher a couple of times. So, like, you know, his his flame is kind of missing. But he's he's charged up as hell. He's ready for crypto, too. Man, I don't know to tell you guys. Crypto market's coming back a little bit. What's Bitcoin at? Like, I, when I woke up, it was like 45,000. If you guys remember, just a couple weeks ago, we were at 29,000. People were calling for 10,000. People were calling for hundreds of bucks of Bitcoin. It's scary when it happens. The sentiment was at uh, like almost an all-time low at 10. Everyone was getting out, selling out, dropping their shit right into the big money bags. You really think these institutions were panicking like a lot of retail was? No. That's the difference between smart money and new money. 22 people, what's up? I think the infrastructure bill will suck for crypto. I also did also did anyone see the potential Binance rug pull on the 29th? Hmm, no, I didn't see that. But why do you think infrastructure would suck for crypto? Well, because that one like clause or whatever with a bill about crypto. I don't know. Damn master, I just think of it like this. I just look at amount of fiat monopoly money dollars being printed into existence. And then I just divide it upon the scarce assets in the world. The more fiat you print, they chase the same amount of goods. We can get into, you know, the 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 bills and the whatever. I'm looking at it from a very economic standpoint. You make more fiat currency, it's going to hurt people's confidence in that fiat currency. We're already starting to see consumer price inflation in various things. I went to Costco like a month ago. They gave you half the amount of chicken you usually get. You know, chicken basically was five dollars a pound, usually going for like two something, right? So like, we're starting to see, we're starting to see certain things tick up. We're starting to see housing tick up. If this happens enough times in people's lives, you're gonna realize that God damn, the dollars, what is going on? See, and it's that thought right there. It's that thought right there that's gonna pull my bags to the sky. The dollar doesn't have to collapse. People just have to trust it less. 24 people, what's up? Getting really into Blanco's block party NFT game. Gaming is in good hands. Blanco's block party NFT game. What is that? Hey, guys, Ben. We're going to jump into the charts and all that. We're going to do that. Just got to say what's up to the people, you know? But what is this? I've been looking for NFT games, you know? If you guys are gamers... And everything like that, <clears throat> you should be playing blockchain games. Don't be giving your time away for free. Get some NFTs. You feel me? Oh, I got to share. Damn. 
Merked my delivery, man. Antivirus going crazy. Hmm. Blancos, block party, early access, play for free. New for PC. I can't wait to get my hands on Blanco's Black Party and explore the wacky little world in my own. What's this? That dude's going ham. Lucha... Luchador and shit? This looks wild, man. <laughs> Take pride in ownership. Good times. I'm not going to play on YouTube because they would like hit me with a copyright strike. We ain't going to do that. Party up. Play Blanco's your way. Get on solo quests and unlock rewards to trick out your Blanco's or grab a squad and compete in epic block parties. Available right now on Windows 10 for free. Buy, sell, collect. The things you earn and buy in Blancos are yours, are your, or yours to own. Damn. <clears throat> That's right. Each Blancos is a new NFT, which means that they hold value. And they can be sold and bought on our marketplace. Stay tuned for news, blah, 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 blah. Damn. These dudes are tricked out. They're on drugs. They're on drugs for sure. That's interesting, man. Hey, anything. I'm <laughs> Play to earn is here to stay. I can help you guys know that. The model of play to earn is here to stay. What's the alternative? Play to not own or play to own? Play to not earn or play to earn? You know, like, obviously, one's better. <laughs> it's better to get compensated for your time than not to get compensated, right? So I think this is what's going to turn gaming on its head. We're going to start seeing blockchain games come out. They're going to be doing play to earn. And then traditional gaming is going to be like, shit. We got to get on board and they're going to get on board. And then we're going to see some weird cross trading of NFTs from game to game, from blockchain games to traditional games. It's going to get all merged up. I can't wait. 27 people. What's up? I didn't even know about that, but thanks. That's, that's good to know. I, pl I like to play Gaza Unchained. If you guys don't know real quick. Unchained. Might as well just do this right now since we're talking on the subject. And I'll, I'll move on. 26 people, what's up? Gods and Chain, creator, <coughs> created by some Riot Games engineers and some other people, right? <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is doing this. <clears throat> I need some Goku juice, man. <clears throat> call me, call me. Ah, okay, I'm good. Ah, oh, I did that and lost 24 people. They couldn't take the power levels over 9,000. You can't take it, you know, come on. Like, this is it's, it ain't the puppy pack. It's the power levels over 9,000. Let's see. Gods and Chain, trading card game that plays pays to play. So basically, it's a trading card game, a strategy. I like that stuff. I love, like, stuff that uses my brain. I like strategy. And, um... Riot Games engineers, Riot Games makers of one of the most popular video games, League of Legends. Also, the dude from Magic the Gathering, like I, I forgot, was a VP, like things, uh, like a really high up dude. I forgot his like actual name, like his um title. But Chris Clay, very integral in making Magic the Gathering. They're they're all up in this partner. One of their partners is Coinbase. Okay, it's not up here. Yeah, Coinbase is partnered with them. So that just tells me at some point, this shit should be offered on Coinbase. They're cards. I'm going to play it because as I play it, I earn these cards. As time goes on, they get more and more rare. Man, I like that. Anyway, 27 people, what's up? Good morning. How you been? Smoke another, LOL. You guys can smoke whatever you want. Get all weird and shit. I don't care. You think I look do, I look? do I look like I care? Do I look like I care? No. I'm mostly in BTC, ETH, IC, ICP, and some SHIB, LIV, and MS, MNST at the moment. Hmm. Okay. That's good. BTC, ET, ETH, ICP. That's it. That's a bold play. ICP's been going up though. ICP's been going on. You guys seen that? I remember about two months ago, everyone was like, oh, damn, this is such a VP scam, da 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 or venture capitalist scam, whatever, whatever. This, this thing reached down to like 30 bucks, and now it's almost doubled itself. 
Look at this volume come up in here. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> I got to calm down. I'm drinking coffee, guys. Come on. I'm drinking that coffee. But, um, yeah, man. Good shit. Oh, hold up. I got to close some shit. Before I do that, I got to close my shit. It's killing my computer. My bad. What else? What else? What else? Okay, we should be okay. Okay. This is some real-ass volume, man. And it just barely went, doot, right up on this ledge. I mean, last time I hit it was, last time I hit it was June 29th, 2021. So that's about a month or so ago. Next price will, should be about 111 bucks. It's currently, like, most of the supply isn't even out yet, 30% out on circulation. Total supply is going to be $471 million. So, hey, you know, you can say what you want to say about ICP, but, like, it's starting to turn around a little bit. That's interesting. Really interesting. Elizabeth, what's up? You've been, you've just earned yourself a spot on my tax returns under uh, continuing education. <laughs> really? <laughs> Cheers. That's how you know you made it. You get people tax write-offs and shit. I like that. It's okay. You've been you've been contributing to the channel. Five bucks. Thank you very much. Don't ask for your money. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm making moves, guys. High places. BCH gang. BCH gang. Man. BCH, man. I'm expecting to do some big things. But so you guys know though, right? Like, just so you guys know. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit um, what do you call it? OXT in a second. Let's do BCH real quick. Just take a look at it. This thing looks a lot like when it looks a lot that the pattern. ICX looks a lot like um <clears throat> EOS. These older coins are doing. They're they're looking like a little bit correlated. They pop out at the same time. Well, BCH is very correlated to EOS, to be honest with you, because they were pumping the same time when um the bullish rumor came out for EOS. <clears throat> what I'm saying is this: this thing last cycle ran up from 300 bucks, and in three months, topped out at about 4,000. Real quick, that's about three months. It did all its move. I'm expecting the same thing to occur on BCH this time around in Q4. All K.IMs coming out. This thing typically moves Q4 real hard, real fast. It's going to happen real quick, real quick. Everyone's going to hate it, <clears throat> talk shit about it until it happens, and they're going to miss out. You know, BCH is cool. I like it. When Bitcoin pumps. Everyone's going to look at everything that says Bitcoin, and they're going to throw their money at it. Take my money. Fry meme. You know what I'm saying? Futurama. Not financial advice. <clears throat> 29 people. What's up? How you guys doing? Good. How's your week? Chilling? Good? All right. I started drinking coffee really early today. I woke up and did a wan not a wan chain video, but I did a video covering Zurina. You guys heard about that Zurina? It's like that Zookeeper NFT lottery thing where the the you know Zookeeper their NFTs are animals and stuff. They're mascots. Well, they're fighting each other. It's wild. <laughs> Trying to help out the the old home, you know the homies that got me where I am today. Wan chain was always there for me, helping them out. You guys will see a video for me on that. It's it's pretty it's pretty wild. <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Thirty one people. What's up? Uh, oh, OXT. Real quick. We're gonna jump into the the macro trends, guys. Let me just catch up. Woo! OXT starting to round up. Shit, I got it in around twenty five cents. Thing ran up a lot. Fell down a lot, right? Like back down to where I bought it at. Just goes to show you guys, <clears throat> you don't got to FOMO, FOMO in. You don't got to FOMO in. I mean, I bought this thing really way back in October 2020. 
This thing ran up April, so that's seven months later, fell back down again. You could have waited nine months. You could have picked the same thing up at the same spot. It just takes patience. It also takes the ability to let something run away from you. If you're able to have if you're able to have a level of detachment in your investments, sometimes things come back when you thought they were gone, and sometimes they take off. Whatever it does, you have to be okay with that. And it takes an abundance mindset, man. Like, up, oh, took off, it's cool. I'm not gonna rush into it. And people are gonna be sitting there saying, Oh, are you sure this is the next best thing? You might wanna. You, you can't hear it. You can't take that seriously. That's the devil on your shoulder, man. Saying, hey, hey, hey. Buy, buy, at all, buy at all time highs. Buy when it's up in the sky. Do it. Do it. You might miss it. You're missing your chance to be rich. It ain't never going to come back for you. That's that lack mindset. And see, after a certain amount of time, the price comes back down to get you. It might be in a month. It might be in the bear market. But just, just tell yourself, hey, am I willing to increase my risk just to jump into something because I can't wait. It's really what it comes down to. That's the difference between new money and practice money in crypto. Practice money in crypto says, well, huh, you know what? I might just wait when this bear, this bull market ends and I'll come get it then. You know, There's a strength in that. It just doesn't feel good. It's, it's a delayed gratification. But yeah, OXT <clears throat> starting to round up. See that? Right around here. W pattern, obviously a double bottom. We have some more volume sneaking in here. I'm really interested in how far it's going to fly this time. Because this last one was pretty epic. I saw this. I was in OXT back here in August 12th of 2020 when Barso Presidente jumped in here. And this thing went up a lot. Like what? Six times? Fell back down. I wasn't buying up in here. I said, I'll wait for it to come down. It's going to come down. And it did. And then I picked it up. And I'm just waiting for this next spike. But no, this is oscillator. When it goes up, you must harvest. Because it's shown you its nature. It goes up high. It comes down low. Like, a lot like an XRP. It's pretty unforgiving. Pretty much, you know, between August 15th to August 25th, it lost. Damn. 30%-ish? I'm just guessing a... Or a figure. I don't. I didn't do the math on that. This goes to show you guys, though. When you're in the green, take some profits. You know, thirty-one people. It's good. What up, Dub? What up, Chat? What's good, lifestyle? How you been? Okay. Oh shit. Yeah. Let me hurry up. Guten Morgen, Dub. Oh shit. Hi. <laughs> Wolfpack, good times ahead for all of us. Might be a bumpy road. Might not excited to see it all um it all play pay at, pay out. Play out. Looking at small islands to buy right now. Hey. Dude, I don't want an island. That's too much work. Got to got to like cut down the rainforest, infrastructure, all that. Ah, I ain't trying to do all that. I'm just trying to Smoke some green and play some Tom Kennedy, man. God, can I get a, can I get a view? Can I get a view? You know what I'm saying? No? Mm. Moon sign. Hey. I heard nothing would be implemented from the build until next year. Hope alts run before. Guys, let's we're we're about to jump into this this macro charts. But let me tell you something. Cycles aren't affected by events. Cycles precede events. That's the beautiful thing about being able to read charts and learn how, like cycle analysis. A lot of people get it twisted that cycles are manipulated and thrown on and off by events, unforeseen events. Wrong. Cycles precede events. In a way, cycles predict events. Well, why does it say, the chart say that like, all coins and, and Bitcoin is going to go down or whatever. It's it's because it, an event is coming. It's not the other way around. That's the thing that people don't understand. Cycle analysis don't really get. It's hard to explain because it sounds weird. Dub Digital, are you saying this is like a predictive kind of? Yeah. Chart analysis is predictive. 
It doesn't tell you what will happen. It just tells you what happens. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't give you the why. It shows you the result. We'll see at the end of this if I'm right or wrong. This is a social experiment, and I'm playing it out right in front of you. Will it be a super cycle? That's not what the cycle suggests. That's why I made that four-year cycle video. That's K.O. Ken form of Goku. This? Yeah, man. This is before Goku had that purple hair and shit. The fuck? What the hell is that, man? Like the Dragon Ball GT, GT or whatever the hell. I was like, does that dude have like freaking... Is he supposed to have yellow hair? <laughs> That's why I stopped looking at Dragon Ball. I was like, what the hell is going on here, man? I just like my Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z shit. 32 people is good. Be humble. Thank you, man. Always come, always showing out for the channel. Much appreciated. Thank you very much for the super chat. Very generous. Thoughts on taking profit swing trading. Would you be more focused on DeFi and yield farming now that core positions have been established? Thoughts on BLND on Icon? Potential value. Well, so, okay. <clears throat> so, profits for swing trade? Taking profits on swing trades. Is that what you're saying? Sure. I have my... <clears throat> Guys, I don't even know what's wrong with my voice. I did drink a little vodka last night, though. That's for real. <laughs> Maybe that's it. <clears throat> <clears throat> drink a vodka on the couch. But basically, guys, like this. I have my core positions, the, the cryptos I really like, the BCH. I mean, like the BTC, BCH, EOS, ETH, like those, like, Blue bat like blue chip coins that like I think are more safe and I really, really like. I'm gonna hold them until the the length of the trend. But then I have those smaller altcoins. I like them, I'm in them, but they're more illiquid. They're smaller, they're harder to trade, they go up and down, they're more sporadic, they're unpredictable. Because of that, I like to swing trade those. You know, like for example, like RSR, I'm a swing trade that. For example, like, well, no, maybe some of my wasp, I'll swing trade it. Like it just, it just, I look from a risk mitigation standpoint. That's how I identify things I like to swing trade versus things I like to hold the length of the trend, right? Because they go like this, boom, boom. If I know it's going to come down, I might as well pull it when it's up. And then I could switch it down into something undervalued as long as I have enough time left in the cycle. But keep in mind, be situationally aware. Don't swing trade forever. Maybe early, you know, here in October, maybe early November, you, you're sitting on profits from a bag that blew up. You go pick it, put it into something else. Let's say, I don't know, say my RSR blows up. I'll pick it, put it, buy more Digibyte. Digibyte takes off. You know, like you can move it around, but at the end of the cycle, the longer you do it, the more you put yourself at risk for sitting in a bag that just tanks. And those profits that you got become lesser and lesser because you kept playing on the razor's edge. So like I've showed you the cycle. November's typically not when it's like topping out at. December is definitely a time I'm not going to be doing none of that, even late November, right? But as far as from now to probably like October, I'm open to doing that, you know? And I'm uh, that's money you want to move. I have money that's sitting there that's going to ride that trend for me. That's where I'm going to make the most of my money. But then I have another pot that I like to move around. It's active, you know. Boom, put it in here. Boom, put it in here. How much time I got left? Boom, put it in here. Boom. And then once I get close enough to the end of the cycle, I'm like, okay, that's it. And then I capture my profits. Because what's the point of making profits if at the, at the tail end, you lose your profits? You hear what I'm saying? And then in terms of um, BLND or Balland, that's the governance token of the balance um, network on Icon, which is their first DeFi platform. I, okay. So when they first opened up, you know how they incentivize capital and people to put their money into it by spiking the yields? I was doing that when it was like 3,000, 7,000%. So like, I have a good amount of balance. I think there's only a, I think there's only a million ever to be made, right? So like, that was worth it for me to get into it then because this the rates were so high, just like I did with um with WanSwap. The rates were high for the first like month, 
I think it was like five times or whatever. Now, I mean, I still get Ballon every single week by doing the air drip. It's basically if you stake your icon with the P rep, you can sign into the balance um balance network and do and like say, hey, I'm staked. And they give you as an incentive to support the icon ecosystem, they give you a portion of balance. That's still a significant amount when you take into account that there's only a million balance ever to be made. I'm getting a million club every single month. I mean, every single week on top of what I, I mind. So it all depends on how successful you think Icon will be because blockchains are network effects, more or less. I'm trying to get you guys to understand why I think the way I think. So you don't need me. You don't, you don't need me to give you that fish. You can catch that fish yourself, right? Icon, big in Korea. Korea loves, loves, loves crypto. It's an interoperable platform. So a lot of money could flow into it. Has a stronghold in Korea. And Balance their first and only, I think, DeFi platform, at least currently, on Icon. Yeah, I think they're going to do well. It's just that that traction has to catch hold. That network effect has to catch hold. And right now, I think Korea has been going through some kind of like, you know, like a crypto pause. That's cool. Balland, I'm going to sell it like definitely at the end of the cycle for sure. But I can't make extrapolations what the price will be. But I think just giving you those fundamentals, you can understand why and if Icon catches hold and Icon's about to upgrade their system to 2.0. That's going to bring attention to Icon. Money should come to Icon. It's interoperable so it can accept a lot of money. And once that money's in there, they like to get yield. DeFi craze has shown us that. Balance right there. And when people flood into to Balan, I'm already all up in Balan. You only need to really need one Balan to be in the Million Club. Just FYI. 29 people, what's up? Okay, guys. I think I, I've been uh, talking long enough. We can get into it. Let's get into it. It's been 32 minutes. Okay. I'm down with it. Let's go ahead and look at the Bitcoin Liquid Index. Ta-da. You guys seen this before. If you guys haven't watched my four-year cycle video, make sure to watch it. I could say a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that, but that's going to put it out the most eloquently I, I can put it. You know, so make sure to watch it. You haven't. Um, okay. So as you guys can see, cycle one, cycle two, cycle three for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's about to complete its third cycle in its history over the last 11 years or so since it's been in existence. There's people saying, you know, oh, they're, we're lengthening cycles. Well, based on, you know, the last two cycles, the cycles really haven't been lengthening. In fact, they all ended uh, or Bitcoin has topped out in early to mid December. There's a case for lengthening cycles, but like Bitcoin from this cycle to this cycle, only top the difference between the topping out periods was two weeks. So is it really lengthening that much? We haven't seen that happening as of yet. And I don't like to plan on anomalies. I like to plan on past patterns playing out. Okay. So let's see. I drew this. When Bitcoin was still down here around 30 something thousand. And then since that point, Bitcoin's currently sitting around 45,000, shot up around 42% from that point, more or less, right? I'm talking, you know, not so specifically. But I just want to let you guys know like, let's, let's understand why it didn't come down to like, mid 20s, low 20s, or whatever. Okay. At the lowest point, from the bottom trend line, Bitcoin was 25% above it, okay? And this this bottom trend line dates all the way back to 2010. Let's do that the next cycle. Well, not the next cycle. Shit. My bad, guys. Not the bottom trend line. Cycle high, okay? Cycle high. Last cycle high, December 2017. The mid-cycle high occurred April 2021 for this cycle. It still didn't come that close to touching all-time high in 2017. It was about 52% above. Same thing over here. Cycle high um, in 2013. 
or yeah, psycho high in 2013 was 1200 bucks about even in uh, 2017 It was like 50% above coming back and touching that all-time high. All of these people think that Bitcoin runs up, comes down, and does a nice clean resistance support flip right on the last cycle um, cycle top. That's not the case. That hasn't been the case for the last eight years. So when you put it in perspective, why would it happen now? And in fact, Bitcoin's price running up is suggesting that this time's really not that different. We have a similar accumulation pattern over you know the last three years like we did here. Well, Dub Digital, this looks a lot different than this. Yeah, that's true, because there is less market cap. When there's less market cap in asset, the price rises are greater, more expansive, more explosive. As more money stays in Bitcoin, you'll notice that that increase up gets lesser and lesser until Bitcoin becomes more or less a more stable store of value. And I told you guys that, you know, we're going to grind. We're probably going to give some background here. Don't think that this is a straight up. I don't I don't think we're at that point yet because October has really been the month when Bitcoin starts to break above its previous mid-cycle high. So it's only early August. Then we got September. So we're probably going to get some grind action. You know, people are going to think, jump in, jump in, and it might give some back. But the good thing is this. We're not falling down. We're not breaking the long-term trend line. Everything that's happened in previous cycles has been happening now, even though the structures look a little different. No one said it's going to be exactly the same, and no one said it's going to be easy to predict. The whole nature of a crypto market is to shake most people out. That's the only way people who stay, people who see it through get so much money because it's a contrarian play. We've been dropping people we can this whole freaking time. They've been dropping like flies, man. Dropping, dropping, dropping. Bitcoin's coming down. I'm out. Bitcoin's coming down. I'm out. Nah, man. Look at this. They were getting out between May and July 20th. Sell, 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 selling, 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 selling. Guess who sold up here? Institutions. Guess who's selling, selling here? Retail. Retail's buying all up in here. Buying, buying. Oh, it's going to the moon. Institutions like, hey, hey, new money's here. Let's sell on them. Selling, selling, selling. Price tanks. Then retail continues the, the drop by selling at a loss. Institutions sell at a profit, buy with their profits. Retail buys at all-time highs, sells at cycle lows. See how that works? Then all the weak hands get shaken out. There's only strong hands left, and then the price continues upwards. This is what it happens when you're on the right side of the trade. You're making money on the way up. You pull your profits. You buy low. Then you're making more money on the way up and vice versa. It's almost like there's two alternate realities playing out for two different types of people. On the one hand, people who are on the right side of the trade are always making money. They love this shit. It's great. They love crypto. On the other hand, there's people who are always losing money. They hate this shit. They hate crypto. It's a scam. Do you see that? Whatever side you're on, you're right. It's all about how you conduct yourself in the trade. 37 people, what's up? NFT's hidden for like 1,000 plus. Drop for a blue Burberry coming in two days. Burberry? What is that? What's a Burberry, man? I'm trying so hard to play Gods Unchained. It's been three weeks. I've sent the service request and everything. Really? What's wrong with it? Why is it not working? Our cycle is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everyone does 10 minutes of research. And why wouldn't smart institutions buy alts during the bear? So might not see 85% drop, maybe lower drop percentage instead. Um, well, Ziki, I'm just going to, not being a jerk, right? But I just want to point this out. Why do you assume the institutions weren't buying alts? Who said they weren't? Grayscale was. They sell to institutions and high net worth in, in, institutions and individuals and stuff. You know, so like, what makes you think they weren't buying alts? We don't know what they bought. And uh, is Cycles a self-fulfilling prophecy? Um, 
I mean, isn't everything, you know, maybe, but does it matter? You know, as long as it, the, it cycles are psychology, you know what I'm saying? And for your cycles, that's, that's a prevailing theory and not just in crypto, but in cyclical analysis in general, four years. And even in esotericism, right? Like four is completion. So with that said, maybe, but I'll tell you this, I'm ranking on the first page for your cycle. There ain't that many people in crypto thinking for your cycle. For your cycle is more of an OG crypto thesis. A lot of these other people, they're new. They think super cycle. They think they're geniuses. They think they stumble on the next greatest thing. Well, guess what? I thought I stumbled on the next greatest thing, greatest thing last cycle and the cycle before then. And the four-year cycle has always played out. I think this is the, the dynamic between new money and old money in crypto. Old money takes their profits, whether new money likes it or not. Old money saying, hey, I'm going to run away with this shit. I can't, I'm rich as hell. I'm going to come back later. They sell. New money gets dumped on. Prices collapse. Old money buys back in. Is that self-fulfilling per se? I mean, whales, whales take profits. Smart people take profits. As long as smart people take profits, price will drop at some point. And will, will, the, will the percentage drop more than or less than 85%? It could. I mean, but 70% is not that much better, you know? Like, that's still a lot. I mean, is 60 much better? That's a lot. Like, anything more than 30 is kind of crazy, you know? Like, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. But if it drops 70%, I still think that's an L. <laughs> 36 people, what's up? What? Over 9,000. Vegeta. It's Vegeta. Calm down. Calm down. Dragon Ball Z. It's not cold. It's not hot anymore. See? I'm trying to show you guys. I'd be drinking cold coffee out here, man. Rude boy. OG on deck. Stay chief in my friends. Rude boy. Yeah, I grabbed some ICP at 31 bucks. Everyone told me it was a scam. That's why I bought it. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys can see. Just stay aware. Listen to what people say and see what happens over time. Listen to what people say. See what happens over time. Coinbase doesn't list scams. Yeah, they might be me some meme coins and stuff, but scams, that's a big acquisition, acqui acquisition right? Accusation, acquisition, and acquisition. That's funny. It's a big accusation, man. I mean, what? Coinbase, huge company, one of the most successful crypto exchanges in the world, is going to risk their reputation by listing a known scam? No. Come on, guys. Like this, this is business. This is business. They got, they got shareholders. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think it through a little bit. If it's offered on certain exchanges, like Coinbase, it's probably not a scam. It could be a meme. It could be somewhat of a joke, but not a scam. Everyone calls everything a scam. Just know that a lot of these people saying that have been scammed before. Is that the reality talking or is that is that their jadedness talking? 37 people, what's up? It's dub digital. You should stream infrastructure bill. It's live. My doc said, hell no. <laughs> I mean, where's it at? But guys, you know they're gonna like pass that shit. Right? They're gonna pass it. They're gonna pass it. Okay, they're gonna pass it. You heard it here first. They're gonna pass it. Pol 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 the, pol the politicians got to do something. They got to do something. They can't just not do nothing all the time. They're about to get, like, <laughs> revolted on and shit. Like, they're going to, like, oh, like, we know we suck, and we didn't do this, and we didn't do that, and we didn't give you stimulus, and, and we're going to, we were almost kicked everyone out of their house, but, and then they're not going to deliver on this? That's almost, like, damn near suicide. They're going to pass it. 35 people, what's up? Just how everyone said farm was deadlock 
dead. Look at it now, up 40% today. I told my mom to buy. She loved me more now. <laughs> your parents love you more when your crypto goes up. Your parents hate you more when it goes down. Hey, I know that for a fact. Eric, what's good? What's good? Welcome, welcome. VGX taking off with token swap being released more interesting. But more interesting is how it's moving in correlation to BTC. VGX. Ooh, I, I know I know crypto's coming back when people ask me to cover all coins. I know crypto's going down when people want me to cover more macro shit. <laughs> I see it in the minds of people. Let's see. Three dollars sixty cents. Voyager. Hmm. Running up, running up, running up. I like Voyager. I like Nexos, but hey, insured all that stuff. It is interesting. And ever since when? What was this? Pretty much, yeah. When Bitcoin started running up, this thing came up high too. Look, people are gonna start flocking more to like license like you know because this whole scared of regulations thing circling around the ecosystem licensed is gonna be hot you know but like i'm not interested in getting the voyager now i just gotta be straight up i'm not interested in getting the voyager now i'm not interested in getting the nexos now i'm interested when that shit gets crushed that's what i'm interested i'm gonna buy up a whole bunch of that shit and then put my stable coins in it and i'm gonna live off my stable coins and then I'm going to get paid dividends from Nexus and Voyager. Dividend investing. Don't get much simpler than that. But right now is not the time. I want to use these platforms. And I want them to be crushed. Guts cut out. Sprawled all over the street. Then I'm going to come it up and sew them up and say, hey, come on over to my bag. It's warm. It's warm. You're hurting? I'll take care of you. Get in my bag. That's when I want this stuff. 35 people, what's up? Don't know what the California psychics say, but when Bitcoin returns to 50K, I predict everything good will turn to gold. Rise with the tide, friends. Hmm. Well, there's a good reason for it, right, Derek? You know what I'm saying? Derek sounds like he'd be doing that esoteric shit. Hmm. I'm not against it. Not at all. Yeah, man. Oh, this is the Bitcoin dominance. My bad. Yeah, 50K right around here. I mean, at that point, Bitcoin's coming back to coming back to life, and it's no denying it. Right now, people are saying, oh, this is a this is a bear trap or a, a bull trap or whatever. Like it's gonna shoot up and come down, like and everyone's gonna freak out and cry and Bitcoin's going to blow up and the Federal Reserve's going to enslave every, You know what I'm saying? At 50K, people aren't going to be hearing it. People are scared that they're, oh shit, like I missed the bottom, but let me get in before it gets back to the cyclical top because then it's going higher. See, this is all, this is all psychology. And once it passes its all-time, uh, its cyclical high at 65,000 bucks, people are going to say, oh, another blue sky breakout's coming. Let me jump in all to crypto. My viewership's going to go, go back up. I'm going to get a lot more views. I'm going to get a lot more followers because people who left are going to come back. And even more search terms on Google Trends is going to show up. People are going to be searching crypto. They're going to be throwing all their money at crypto. Yeah, man. Like at that point, like this, people be looking at me like, oh, like you're trying to say that this is the same as this in 2013. Once it, you know, grinds back to the, to the cyclical high and starts going up, there's no denying that. That theory has been confirmed. And once that's true and people are certain, then they'll start getting in. But I'm telling you, if you wait to be certain your whole damn life and invest in, you're not going to make that much money. You can make money having 60% of the information when other people need 80 or 100. They need to be certain. They need to know for sure. Well, ain't no one got rich being for sure. Unless they're already rich. Just saying, 33 people, what's up? Listen up. Hey, got financial advice right here. Buy crypto, trade it too. I 
pay Ian Dy Dreyer for trade moves. Hmm. I don't know who that is, but um, listen up saying that. Not me, for the record, not me. But I showed you why I think what I think. I ain't going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to present you information. I'm just a resource. I showed you I showed you my game plan for the next five, what, four months? What you do with it is up to you. Who filled the vodka bottle up with water and put it in the back of the freezer? <laughs> Late listening. What's up, Blind Dave? How you been? Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Um, let me jump back into the Bitcoin dominance. 30 people, what's up? Took my dog to the dog park early today, man. Got up early as shit. Then I filmed a video before. So I'm a little off today. My mind's like blanking. I'm like, ugh. Trying to speak. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. you know? We try to speak and it goes, blah, blah, blah. is that just me? No? Okay. All right, all right. Bitcoin dominance. Get out of here, Brave. I want to see it. Let's do the weekly. Bitcoin dom. Dom, dom, dom. We had the first leg down. Starting really in January 2021. Bitcoin dominance dropped down about 37%. Just to sum it up. Over the last 84 days, Bitcoin dominance at the highest point pumped up about 23%. In this last cycle, Bitcoin dominance, after its first significant leg lower, jumped up about 41%. I was saying that Bitcoin dominance at this line right here, could come back up because that would be about the similar, I guess, percentage up that we experienced in 2017. You know, cycles are not are similar, but not exactly the same. Well, Bitcoin dominance kind of fall and give way and just fall down after a 22% rise. It's possible. I'm still holding Bitcoin, though, in case it turns around. Because Bitcoin dominance rises up when Bitcoin price runs up. People start selling their altcoins, switching into Bitcoin, and Bitcoin dominance rises up. So say if Bitcoin started taking off beyond 65,000, I would expect Bitcoin dominance to rise. And it's not, you know, it rises when crypto is doing bad because it's a, safe, it's a perceived safe haven. And it rises when Bitcoin's doing good because people sell their alts to get into it. So either way I look at it, I think we'll still have an extended rise in Bitcoin dominance. That's just my thought, though. That's why I'm holding Bitcoin. And once it hits around that point, I'm going to sell some of my Bitcoin into altcoins. Because at that point, history has shown us that there have been some significant drops that occur after that. But even if I'm wrong and it doesn't rise up anymore and we just fall out of this, this triangle, then I'm I'm 80% altcoins anyway. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, the long-term trend of Bitcoin dominance has been down for the last one, two, oh, damn, one, two, three, four, five years. So why would it stop now? Why would it just turn around the other way? Beats me. You guys see some of the chart? I don't know. Just been kind of making lower lows. I think this is no different. I'm thinking Bitcoin dominance could go, it's going to go past its its all-time low at 36. I think it's going to go into the 20s or, or high teens. It's probably going to occur in November, December, maybe January, maybe. But like I told you, the farther out you get into like next year, the more you're playing on the razor's edge. I don't know if I want to dance on that edge. You know, that's up to you when you take your profits. But I'm telling you is this. I'm currently 80% altcoins, 20% Bitcoin, more or less. Why? Because I'm expecting most of the money to flow out of Bitcoin into altcoins. And altcoins will go up much greater because they're smaller market cap. It's a simple theory. It's a simple theory. It's not all this MACD, or, you know, it's not, it's not none of that. It's just a basic understanding of market dynamics. I will make my price appreciation off of that simple theory. It's not much more than that. 30 people, what's up? Amp, Algorand to the moon. 
Hey. Amp's doing hot. Algorand's a good coin, too. Hey, Dub, you getting a lot of smoke from the fires up north where you're, you are? I'm getting a lot of smoke here in Vegas. Been messing with my throat. Nah, man, I'm not. I'm I'm down by the coast, bro. So, like, we get a lot of marine layer. We get a lot of breeze and stuff. Not really, to be honest with you. See, like, North California, they, they be getting fires all the time, and, and we don't smell it that much. At least down here where I'm at, like, LA area. I mean, yeah, no, nah, I don't smell shit. <laughs> But yeah, um, Vegas, when I was out in Vegas, man, like, you guys, air quality, I didn't know it was not that great, right? Like, it's already not that great, so that shit's, like, coming, blowing over to you right now. That sucks. Yeah. Stay inside, man. Like, I don't know, get air filter or some shit? My, my girl, she got, like, some pretty bad allergies. We got air filter, so that helps out. 29 people, what's up? Dwayne Taylor, what's up, man? How you been? Jake. Thanks for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Much love. Got to give props on the four-year cycle video. Thanks for the idea on how to take profits along the way. Anytime. It's not It's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Like, hey, Dub, did you told me to take it at, on December and, and January. This, this coin popped off. It's like, yeah, market cap is market cap. Individual coin price is individual coin price. They're two different things. Market cap means a lot of money is an altcoin or Bitcoin space or the crypto space in general. That money flows around. It sloshes around. That's why they call it liquidity. It goes here. It goes there. It goes into DeFi. It goes into NFTs. It goes into this and that and sound money, POW coins. It goes around. That money is like the catalyst though. Crypto is not going to pop off without that money being there. I like to identify points when the money is at its max. And it could go over here in November. It can go over here in December. It can go over here in January. You know what I'm saying? It's exploding different areas, different coins at different times. You'll see that's why Bitcoin Cash took off in December and came down in December. Uh, XRP, was it January? Took off in January, came down the same the same month. They're, just because the market cap is at its highest doesn't mean your coin is going to be at its highest. But the, but the potential for it to be high is greatest. You know what I'm saying? It's not about hitting that top. You're probably not going to hit the top. If you do, that's awesome. I love that. I wish I could hit the top every time, but that's not, that's possible, but not probable. Even pros don't hit the top every time. Focus on your ROI. How much did I get? How many X's did I get on this thing? That's going to help you from having like, like seller's remorse. Instead of being like, oh, I missed I could have sold my XRP at $30 or whatever, and I sold it at 20 Yeah, but bro, you got a 40X. And when you put it like that, you kind of like check yourself on that greed. You're going to be feeling that greed. Check that greed. Where are you getting 40X? Where are you getting 20X? Where are you getting 100X? Where else? I don't know anywhere else, you know? Be happy with what you come out with. You guys, I know I've been through this. Some of you have been through this before. Some of you are new to this, but this is a like a once, should be a once in a lifetime thing. But lucky for us, seems to be coming around every four years. Cheers. 20 people, what's up? Money attracts money. 50K Bitcoin attracts more money. Exactly. 100K Bitcoin will bring billions into the total crypto market cap. Low numbers and big numbers loses interest. Oh, low numbers and big money loses interest. Mm. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, crypto gets so exponential. It gets so juicy. It gets so attractive. It gets so sexy. People be looking over, like, even haters be looking like, oh, shit. You see Bitcoin? Be looking good. I'm going to throw some billions at it. See, that's the thing. I don't care what people think. I don't care what they feel. They can hate crypto all they want. When crypto goes high enough, they're coming. I guarantee it. I bet them they're coming. No one likes to lose money. People love to be proud, but they hate losing money more. Just being real. 20, 29 people, what's up? A crypto feeding frenzy is imminent. Have dry powder ready for massive swings. Yeah. I mean, if you're into swing trading or just have your positions 
like stable, like um, locked in. You know what I'm saying? Again, I've identified bags. I want to swing trade. I want to actively make money from here to there to here to there, capitalize on different times types of pumps. Because guys, remember, you might not have been around in 2017, but 2017 was the first time you saw a big altcoin season. And guess what? Everything moved up and down like this. Bitcoin to go up, altcoins to go up like this. There was no uncorrelation. And everything, everyone thinks that's good, but I hated that because I want uncorrelation. I want to, I want to seed to spring up, harvest it, put it in a seed that's down here and it springs up so I can make way more multiplication events. See, it's like juggling. But when everything goes like this, it don't matter what you invest in. It's all up at the same time. It's all down at the same time. Now we're seeing some pretty good uncorrelation. We're seeing some altcoins running without Bitcoin, like Hedera. We're seeing altcoins running with each other. We're seeing altcoins running when other ones aren't. That's beautiful to me because I could swing the shit out of it. Just make sure you don't swing forever. You might get cut, caught on the way down. 30 people, what's up? Yeah, most people don't understand the having thesis. Takes week, weeks of research to understand, actually. Yeah, supply shocks is economics, man. Bitcoin is direction in crypto. It halves every four years. That means there's a supply shock every four years. Already scarce asset gets even more scarce. People don't notice. They think it doesn't matter because it takes time for available supply to dry up. That supply dries up. And even if the same amount of money keeps entering crypto at a constant rate that it was before the halving, it's going to affect the price on the upside. Why? Because supply and demand, simple economics. Less of an asset, same amount of money means that asset is more rare and the price must meet that rarity. Right? If there was more and more being printed like the US dollar or fiat currencies, that price gets less and less. Bitcoin, crypto is pretty much the inverse of fiat currency. I used to call it when I was, you know, at least when I was trying to understand crypto for the very first time, I came to the, the realization that crypto is the, is the solution. It is the ultimate deflation for the ultimate inflation. It's the sponge that sucks up all this extra liquidity made in quantitative easing and like money printing programs all around the world. It's sucking up the old liquidity. It's making its own ecosystem. It's using excess liquidity that would depreciate your dollar, putting it into a new economy that's building out. It's using extra inflation to be product productive and proactive and put it to use in a digital economy. That's just my thoughts. 34 people, what's up? Doge is back to a quarter. I think in 10 years, this might be a real classic crypto gem. However, I did sell all of mine. Doge, 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 man. Like, damn. I I remember it being... I, I, know, I know a dude who got rich off Doge in 2017. And Doge was nothing what it is now. That dude is on fat stacks. Fat stacks. Doge was a joke. I got it. I, I fell victim to that too. I thought it was a joke too, a meme too. I ain't perfect. You know? Sometimes the God, the universe, it just kind of throws you a wrench like that. Like, ha, dumbass. <laughs> you thought you're all smart, huh? You could have just bought the, the little doggy token. <laughs> but like, that's not something you can really predict though. There's always shit like that. You know, like things that just come out of left field. And, and when you look at it, I've seen this happen enough times. Like, I should have freaking known some dumb shit like that. You know, like, just Bitcoin. I I bought Bitcoin in 2013, but I didn't know it would be like this. I had an idea. I had a vision. I got exposed. But, you know, looking back at it, I'm like, I should have freaking knew it. It's always the stupidest shit. I'm not saying Bitcoin's stupid, but it's like, it's internet money. It's internet money. And everyone around the world is going to look at Bitcoin at a quarter million dollars sometime, I think, soon. And they're going to say, wow, I, I totally discounted this. 
They're going to say that. They're going to be, they're going to have a come to Jesus moment. They're going to have a humbling moment. I had a humbling moment with Doge. But anyone who got in on Doge and made money off it, good for you. That's tight. 35 people, what's up? You got to uh, conceptualize the idea of consensus. Yeah, it's your money, but you know, a lot of people don't understand the problem with like centralized systems. That's the thing. A lot of people don't find a problem with their bank. They don't understand counterparty risk. They don't understand inflation. They don't understand the necessary key concepts for you to understand why a self-regulating 24-hour like hard money system is important and revolutionary. If you don't understand those core concepts, you're not going to understand what crypto is. You're going to think it's World of Warcraft money. See, that's the difference. I had a background in economics. I had a background in business. I understand inflation. So when I heard about this stuff and it crossed my mind, I was like, wait, hold up. That sounds like it fixes a lot of the problems in our current monetary system. And it does. See, it takes it takes some building blocks in your mind, though. That's the problem. 39 people, what's up? Zurina just went live. Check it out. I know you got a vid, but just a little teaser, a, a, a little taste. Yeah, for sure. Got a vid coming out. I just filmed it like at 6.30 this morning. I woke up, I was like, oh, shit, it's going live. Hair's all fucked up. That's my life now, guys. 38 people, what's up? Zurina. The first Zurina battle was intense. Blubber Bob has clearly lost to Emperor Slickfeet in our zoo. The winners are going to have a night of partying and losers are licking their wounds. That's me. I lost. God damn it, Blubber Bob. Basically, though, guys, let me just like read this one tweet. It's like, I think it's a weekly thing, right? At Zookeeper, the platform, where it's kind of like a lottery system where they do randomized like um, computations and it basically tells you who wins between like two NFT mascots. This is Blubber Bob. This is Emperor Slick Feet. They got swords because they be stabbing each other, killing each other. Is it weird? Hey, man, like if you have feelings about animal cruelty, this is NFTs, man. Calm down. But the knives are sharpened for the first Zurina battle for tomorrow. Blubber Bob versus Emperor Slick Feet. That was today, that actually, though. 100,000 zoo in the jackpot. So basically, whoever wins this, like, little battle based on a lottery system, and I explained in my video, like, the, what the randomization is and why it's random, like, ver verifiably, provably random. Um, 400 participants uh, and 330 NFTs attached. Whoever wins, three tickets, lottery tickets get selected. This jackpot is split among those three. So three people got like 30,000 zoo. That's currently valued, I think, what? At 10 cents? That's about $3,000. But at its highest point, I think it was $1.80. That was 54,000 bucks. Whoa there. Right? So that's tight. I'm going to come out with a video with that. Um, But I think it's a weekly thing, right? On Zookeeper. So check it out. I, I, I'm going to cover it. I think I'll release it tomorrow because I got edited today. Yeah. Zcash. What's it up with? What's, what's it doing? $123. Bucks. Hey. It's rounding out too. Looks a lot like Bitcoin Cash. Looks a lot like Icon. Looks a lot like WAN. Looks a lot like um, EOS. They all, all these OG coins have the same pattern, but uh, yeah, it's rounding out. It's highest was three hundred something bucks. That's about the, what it hit in May of two thousand eighteen, right? So we got up there, we got rejected below. Next, I think we're gonna start hitting upwards of four hundred fifty, and I'm expecting to oh, um, like outdo this all time high set in two thousand and eighteen, right? January of about nine hundred bucks or so. Then after that, I've been saying this is the reason I got a Zcash around 90 bucks is because after that, there ain't there's no resistance really. Why is my computer so loud? Damn. After 900 bucks. We'll see. Zcash had its first halving like last year in November. No one talked about it except me. 
I'm the only dude who had like a video on this shit. I'm like, you guys don't care about, like, this is a supply shock. The first one in Zcash's existence, you don't care about this. And everyone's like, no. I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy this shit. We'll see what happens to Zcash. We'll see soon enough in about four to five months. 35 people, what's up? Yo, Cali messing with this low key with the smoke. Y'all don't want no smoke. No. I'm saying, no. I want no smoke. We bring that smoke. Jimmy Iron. Hey, Dub. New to crypto and learning a lot from your videos. Thanks. Anytime, man. Anytime. Just trying to put in an entertaining, engaging, but informative way. It's kind of, you know, when I came in doing like YouTube, it's like an art, man. Like, you're like, okay, I have knowledge. And you throw out that knowledge and it's like, but no one cares. No one lets to watch you. Like, okay, gotta, I got to switch it up, you know? Then I switch up the format and oh, the, the production is not that great. Like, I, I think I'm getting to a point where it's like more digestible. I'm trying to do it in a way that like attracts newer people too. A lot of like older, or I guess seasoned crypto people I find aren't attracted to the channel because it's not in the way that they're used to getting information, which is just straight up like pretty boring, in my opinion, boring, just kind of like nonchalant, like this is what it is kind of format. I'm trying to put in a way where there's some music, there's some production value, there's some humor, there, it's engaging to the eye. Because like, look, guys, we're not going to get anywhere in crypto if we don't pull more people in. What's the point? We're just going to sit around on online talking to each other? No. You know, so like, I want to be that hook that pulls in those new people, that tells them what they need to know in a condensed but entertaining way. So they don't think of crypto when they first find it as a boring ass nerd thing. That's what's the problem, to be honest. A lot of people, they're not into all this stuff. Like we're trying to reach a new demographic. That's what I'm trying to do with this channel. 33 people, what's up? What's up, what's up, man? How you been? Doing good? Good. 100X, equities all day. 100x hey what equities you get 100x in penny stocks maybe got in mt mitx at pretty much three cents not long ago it's high was around 20 cents think i can hit 40 or better at this bull run question mark Let's see it. what's it doing you got it in there Well, hey, you're uh, well, shit, you're you're up like a hundred percent already. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's some wolf shit. Um, can I get the forty cents? I don't see why not. We have some serious volume coming in here, right off the lows. That's some of you actually. Like that's some of your money actually, right? Coming up, yeah. I don't think why it can't grind up. You know, what I'm saying like reason being is we haven't even seen the blow off for alts yet. This is a low cap crypto. I brought you guys Jigstack and MITX in the same video. Sounds like, Elizabeth, you bought both of them. It sounds like you're doing pretty well with both of them. You know, this thing's grinding up. It has a lot of partnerships. It was very exponential. This is showing you the nature of that asset. This this looks a lot. This has a pattern that I saw in Matic a long time ago. Not saying that it's going to be Matic or perform like Matic. But what I'm saying is once it grinds back up this all-time high, it shows you that it explodes upwards explodes right how much is the market cap market cap is 20 20 million typically 10 million is tiny so this thing is a little bit above tiny 100 million is still not that big so this thing is not big at all at all so if this thing catches traction yeah i think it can double from there but we'll have to see that's not financial advice you know how i am i'm just giving you my perspective on it but this is a small cap crypto it fell down a lot. That's the that's the downside of small cap. But the good thing is you can get in early, like really low, and that's what you did. You capitalized on that falling down, and now it's time to see how high it goes up. And we really haven't had all coin season yet. I think it's coming. I laid it out why I think it's coming for your cycle video. Make sure to watch it. Thirty four people, what's up? Ethereum is going to get played by big money, buy low, sell high, again and again. Create a hodl stack too. Hmm. 
I mean, it's it's like sanctioned. It's like blessed by the powers that be, you know? Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, okay. 33, I caught up with all this stuff. Hour 15 in, we can jump over the total to mark cap. Let's do it. Okay, total two. This thing dropped off the cliff right when Bitcoin started dropping. Fell down about sixty percent. Everyone was losing their lunch, saying all coins are gonna die. I hate, I hate myself. Why did I get into this? Mom, come help me. Crying in the fetal position, all that that crazy shit. Then, right around here, July twenty, July of twenty twenty one, this thing is up about fifty four percent. This is the total market cap of of all coins. Okay, this is all the money in all coins. So money's starting to leak back and pretty aggressively. Does it mean that it's just going to go up in a straight line? No, nothing ever does. Just want to keep it realistic for you guys. Might we do some grinding? Maybe some of this? Yeah. But I'm showing you what I think is going to happen, right? I'm showing you that whatever it does, if it does some of this and some of that, you want to see it incremental moving up with the bottom trend line. Let's go ahead and draw just from bottom to bottom. Let me turn this into solid. Just so you guys can see graphically, so I think it's going to happen, like something like this. See what's going on here, though? Watch. It, that's a bull pattern. That's accumulation right there. Dips down, grinds back up, shoots off. And I think, I'm thinking October, right around here, is when we should be approaching the all-time highs again. September, August is going to be somewhat choppy because people aren't 100% convinced. But once you grind back up to this all-time high or this, yeah, all-time high for altcoins, people are going to be at their max bullishness. They're like, let's go. Let's go. And right when this thing starts breaking out, that's when you start seeing everything starting to double on Coinbase. There's a moment in time when there's just like everyone's just so confident. Like, oh, it's breaking out. We're going in a million, whatever. Let's do it. And like everyone's all up in Coinbase. New people are coming to Coinbase. They're buying their first crypto. They're buying the lowest cryptos. There was a moment in time, the last breakout, when I was just putting the same amount of money in one coin, it doubles, take it off, put in another coin, it doubles, takes it off. Like that's the point where like trading anything on Coinbase is profitable. You know, it's not that way forever, but early in the breakout, the noobs are rushing in, they're scared they're gonna be missing out. They're just buying everything that's low. That's what I like to swing trade. It's like irrationality, the exuberance is there. As we go up and up in the cycle, and this crypto market cap keeps reaching up, you know, higher and higher, I'm going to be more and more hesitant to start doing that. But like early on in the breakout from like this area at 1.5 trillion, that's when I'll be more comfortable doing that because I know that there's some more, more way to go, but like we're not there yet where it starts topping off. But like, look guys, I'll show you. 39 people, what's up? Um, yeah, same thing with Bitcoin, right? We didn't come back down to this previous all-time high set in 2017 at 473 billion. We stayed above. We're starting to grind back up. I think we're going to take off for the last most exponential leg in all coins. Why do I think that? Because I showed you the Bitcoin dominance and I think it's ready to drop. It's wanted to drop. Not financial advice. 39 people, what's up? It's a win-win either way. If it goes down in August, it'll be better buy better buying. Yeah, guys, like what if it goes up down in August? Does that mean the four-year cycle's off? No, it just means that we're grinding. Watch the trend. Is it is it trending upwards? Is it a random drift upwards? And then that drift should get more intense during September. And October has been typically a good turnaround month for crypto. If this thing turns around and falls down and breaks our long-term trend line that I set in, in Bitcoin, then that's a problem. But as long as we haven't like breached that trend line, you don't care how you get there. You should just care that you get there. I'm not in I'm not in the, the business of predicting the market needs to go here, then there, then 
I don't give a damn how it gets there. I just want to I just want to exit at the top. And over the last 10 years, Bitcoin has gone through periods of expanse and contraction, expanse and contraction. But the long-term trend has been like this up and to the right. 39 people, it's good. 3k 3k ETH made me buy more. It is what it is, man. Shoot. I don't suggest it, but I'm thinking about I might do like a leverage token long on ETH. You now, if can't get liquidated, it is what it is. Psh, I might do it. Just write it, you know. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at to do it, I never really suggest it if you guys don't know how to do that kind of stuff. Just be, be like real with yourself on what your experience level is. Sometimes you can hurt yourself being more aggressive than you should be, especially if you're not learned in this stuff. But with that said, let me show you what I'm looking to be getting, doing that stuff on. You can do it on, um, I guess, synthetics, right? They got, they got leverage tokens. Basically, you can't get liquidated with leverage tokens. You just lose a lot more and gain a lot more. But Phoenix Finance, this is the platform that got hacked on WanChain. They re relaunched. They're going to be on WAN. They're going to be on, I think it's Matic or Polygon, right? Where else? They just got done with their audit. That's dope. And Binance. They'll be on Binance as well. Basically, they offer like tokens like Ethereum a uh, Bull, Ethereum Bear, Bitcoin Bull, Bitcoin Bear, all that stuff. I like it better than margin positions because I don't have to monitor my collateral. Because basically on like traditional like leverage positions, like if you go underneath a certain amount of collateral, you get liquidated, they sell your shit. That doesn't happen with leverage tokens. Um, but hey, it's something I'm looking to do, not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you like interesting platforms I'm looking to use because I like decentralized options. If you can do it, maybe check it out. If you can't do it, don't do it because this is more risky if you're not prepared to deal with the consequences of it. Just being real with that. But Phoenix Finance, hey, I like those leverage tokens better than leverage, leverage positions, you know? 40 people, what's good? Ruby keeps teasing something big for DGB. Oh, Rudy. Hmm. LOL, BitBoy got all hyped on his show. DGB, what's up with it, man? I like DGB a lot. And so much bearishness. So much bearishness. Seven cents. I mean, DGB is looking a lot like all the other OG. Oh, no, this is not DGB. What the hell? I, I hit DGB, man. Everything's getting love right now. DGB is still taking a shit on the sidewalk. It's loading. Oh, my internet sucks. Hey, guys, give me energies. I need your energies to pull me out of this. Okay. Oh, wow, it worked. You guys are real ones. Still loading. What the hell? Ah, damn it. So Digibyte right here, it's still not like doing what a lot of coins are doing, but I'm going to show you. This is a very, it showed you its nature. It moves up high, moves up fast. It already exceeded its last all-time high in 2017. Peaked out of what? Maybe 15, 16 cents. Fell right back down because Bitcoin, not Digibyte, Bitcoin. And this was preceded, um, this was in combination with a lot of like community tensions between the founder, I think Josiah, right? And all this other shit, whatever. It was like a perfect storm. It already went past this all-time high. So we know it can do that. And what happens when something goes into new all-time highs, when the market is ripe for price appreciation? It's called price discovery. How high will did you buy go? I'm not sure. But it sounds like there's something on the on the way, fundamentally speaking, that's good for DGB that most people don't know about. And look at this. It's like a rounding, it's like a parabola-esque kind of thing. Seven-year-old, right, blockchain? Like decentralized and mining algorithms, decentralized and mining hardware, long, secure chain, decentralized. They build a lot of hot tech, like, it's a, it's due its time, man. That's just that's just me speaking. 
my my personal opinion. I think it's due its time. Short of Bitcoin 100x at 45k. It's closing. It's over closing this bitch at triple digits. Nice, nice. 100x leverage. That's that takes balls, man. That takes balls. It goes bad for a lot of people, but I'm glad I worked out for you. That's tight. What do you think the total market cap will hit end of year? 13 trillion possible. I showed you guys a, a use case. I did the calculation before. Um, 10 trillion to 14 trillion. I could see a I could see a situation where all coins hit 10 trillion by themselves. We already hit goddamn near 1.5 trillion at the mid cycle high this time around. Just all coins. Just all coins. That was the first impulse up. And everyone knows the second leg is more impulsive. How high will it go? You know, I mean, like that's not even a 10x. That's that's like a, a 6x or some shit. I don't know. That's doable, right? Like all coins tend to go farther and faster than Bitcoin because of smaller market caps. Hey, institutions have bought Bitcoin. They have yet to really dive deep into all coins. That's what I think might propel this. It's the it's the redistribution of wealth from the digital gold to the digital equities, the growth stocks. Watch the four year cycle. Mind blown. Feel smarter. Shared on CT. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, man. I mean, zoom out. It pays to be a macro investor because you understand. Like, okay, these dudes are looking all up in the weeds. They want to be all up, it, all close up. But if you step back, you're like, wait, this shit's been happening for the last decade. And how do I know? I've been in it. I've been, I know Bitcoin goes up and down. And I got more sophisticated with charts than I uh, verified it technically. And I said, wait, what I felt is exactly what's been happening. And I can show it and I can explain it and articulate it. That's what gives confidence in taking contrarian plays. It's knowledge. You guys aren't as knowledgeable as you want to be right now in crypto. That's what the bear market's for. I did all I got all kinds of smarter in the bear market. You know what I'm saying? Like knowledge really is power, man. Because it get it gives you that leg to stand on when nobody in the world agrees with you. And that's how you'll be able to step off step off the ledge by yourself. Go it alone when no one believes it because they don't have the understanding you do. And they say, okay, well, how come, you know, Bitcoin, so this and that, how come it dropped down? It's like, because you don't understand the cycles, man. Four year cycle lays it out beautifully. And if you guys aren't to that level yet, I very, really, really hope that you take your, improve your technical um, abilities. Do the lead work in the bear market. Because the bear market, it could be a beautiful time. Everything's on discount. You're sitting on fat stacks. Bought a new home, bought a new car. Your life's changed. You're in a different reality. And then on top of that, you're, you're investing in your mind, in your mental tools. So you can do this again, more frequent, in shorter time periods. Explain to people. Help them understand. Part, share the knowledge. Share the gift. You know what I'm saying? Like, four-year cycle makes a lot of sense to me. It happened the last two cycles. This time might be different, but I'm not going to bet on it. That's just me. 43 people, what's up? I'm just waiting for EOS because when Bitcoin was going down, that is when EOS pumped. Just being patient. Yeah, see, FOBLO, that's the thing. You're starting to realize, okay, well, why did EOS go down again? It's not because of EOS. It's because Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's the God market. Bitcoin is direction. Nothing really pumps off that much, or sustained at least, when Bitcoin's going down. EOS has all the building blocks behind it. Its own exchange, Bullish Global. They got an ex-New York Stock Exchange president joining the team. They're going public on the New York Stock Exchange. Tell me that is not bullish. How long have we had to, had to wait for any of this stuff to happen in crypto? A decade? And now it's happening and no one gives a damn. Okay, I think you're tripping. I think they're tripping. And I'm going to sit on that bag. And I'm going to wait. And I'm going to I'm going to freaking buy a house with that shit. 
I'm talking some shit now. I am. Because, like, to be honest, man, like, it just, it just is baffling to me for new investors to come in space and think that, like, a New York stock listing isn't a big deal. For people in EOS to think that EOS is still trash because B1 started an exchange, like, they're just stole their money to do something else. Do you guys ever think that these guys are strategic thinkers? They're long, long, bald kind of guys. Do you think they're not going to have any kind of utility on the EOS, you know, EOS token on Bullish Global? Really? They're pro they're focusing on profile being compliant. They they settle with the SEC. They were unregistered security and they settled with SEC. And then for West Virginia, West Virginia gave them half a million dollars to build a building outside of Washington, DC. Um, put the pieces together. Watch my EOS video. Watch them. Like, I, I don't know how much more I gotta spell this shit out for them, you know. 46 people, what's up? Do you think there's a possibility of the prices of most coins going back to its original low prices from a year ago? Or do you think there will be new higher levels of support? Oh, I mean, let's just look at it, right? Let's just look at a random one. That's easy. Let's just look at, well, not easy. What's a good... I don't know. Let's just pick Bitcoin Cash. Not for not not for any reason, just because, you know. Uh, okay, not a good one. I want to see one with longer price history. What is long price history on CoinMarketCap? Okay, 2016 ETH was at 13 bucks. 2017 comes around, it goes up to about 1,400 bucks. Was it high? Then, at the lowest point, it hit 90 bucks. And this was during capitulate capitulation. It's gonna go up to another high. It's gonna come back down, and it's probably not gonna hit ninety bucks again. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's a slow stair stepping, because the trend line is ever so slight, but it's still going up and to the right. So no, I don't think it's gonna hit its its prices from a year ago. It's still going up like this. It's just going through periods of expansion and contraction. So no, I don't think they will revisit their lows, but it will come down a lot compared to the high. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. When you're not worried about money, you can make more money because your mind is free to be creative and learn. Can't focus and learn when you're chasing money. That's true. That's true. But it's possible. We've all been there. It's possible. We've all been there. It's easier when you're not chasing money, but it's possible to do it when you're when you're scrapping too. It's just hard. Well, Dub Digital, I ain't got no time to do it. Well, okay, man, you got a lunch break. What do you do on your lunch break? Well, you got a commute. What do you listen to on your commute? You listen to Cardi B on your commute. How many times are you gonna listen to that Cardi B song, man? That shit ain't teaching you how to make money. You're not learning shit listening to that. Oh, well, when I get home, I don't want to. What do you listen to when you get home? When you are chasing money and you're in the and you're in the, the struggle on that survival baseline, you gotta give up your your free time too. You gotta make some time. Well, dub when when it's the weekend, I'm tired, man. Like I, I get want to get up at like nine. Maybe you gotta get up at five. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are all things I had to do. It's not going to be easy, but if it was easy, everyone would be rich. You know what I'm saying? Then once you start getting some success, you start satisfying that baseline, then you have some more room to breathe. But they call it the struggle for a reason. It's a struggle. But what I found was I was never going to get out of it until I put that extra effort in. You know what I'm saying? Not saying it's not easy. It's, it's it's easy. It's not easy, but it's necessary. Forty-seven people. What's up? Facts. Just sold a hundred MNS MNST. It's a wild ticker, and one thousand lith, and bought lunch. <laughs> you bought lunch, but lith? What the? 
No, I'm just kidding. LNCHX at 50 cents on KuCoin. Drink, smoke, trade. LOL. Ha. Derek be like, bye. <laughs> 47 people. I got the Goku Cup, man. Hey, for real, though. I mean, you know, Gucci Mane's cool, but he ain't teaching you how to make money. He's just telling you about the money he's spending. Just got to be real. If you checked out Farm on Coinbase, that pump right now, that pump right now is crazy. No, I haven't seen it. Harvest Finance? Is that what it is? It's on Coinbase? Yeah, what the hell? There's all these crazy ass coins. Mm, it came out not too long ago. I mean, look at that volume though. I don't know. It's 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 reducing volume though. So like I'd expect it to come down a little bit, but yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's wild. Hmm. What the hell is this? Harvest is described to automatically farm the highest yield available for the newest DeFi protocols and optimizes the yields that are received using the least farming techniques. Farm is a governance token for Harvest. It's, it is claimed that farm holders can vote on proposals for the farm operational treasury and receive a 5% fee for Harvest operations. Hmm. Sounds confusing. DeFi stuff. DeFi is coming back. Don't know else to say. NFTs are coming back too. NFTs have been popping off. Like, like crazy. That's interesting. It's true about the will. You're right, Dub. Yeah, man. You know. It's, it's, how bad do you want it, man? Like, that's what it is, dude. How bad do you want it? You can get it. You got to climb a mountain. That's all. Yeah, I read, I read FUD on Twitter from the YouTube Lark, the YouTuber Lark, trashing EOS, and thought, hell no, nah, Dub wouldn't have anything to do with this nonsense. I mean, look, man, I mean, Crypto Lark or Lark Davis or whatever he's going by now, like, he has his opinions. I got my opinions. I'm not going to say he's wrong. I mean, it's just information and how we interpret it. Some people have a problem with like how like opaque and I put together the breadcrumbs and like, oh, that's nothing. That's just a theory. It's like, okay, we'll see. And that's the beauty of it. We all have different opinions. People are right about some things that I'm wrong on. I'm right about some things that other people are right on. Like no one's a, a genie here. But what I'm saying is like, hey, like, are you just going to ignore the fact they're listing on a stock exchange? Are you just going to, are you just going to ignore it that they, Novogratz is in it with Peter Thiel, who's like PayPal. Like, you're just gonna ignore that. You're just gonna ignore that. Like, the creators of EOS started this exchange, and they're probably going to use EOS because they made the coin. Like, you know what I'm saying? These are connections that make sense to me. Some people have preferences. Some people have biases. It's up to you to recognize that. You listen to what they say, interpret it, use discernment. And if it don't feel good, if you don't gel with it, if it's not in congruence with what you've learned and your knowledge about the asset, then, hey, I think that's something that you don't take into account. Just be real with yourself. Are you also being biased because you're invested? Or is it truly that they're being, they're looking past good evidence? You have to be real with them and real with yourself. Got to be honest. 44 people, what's up? I'll learn a new language before I listen to Cardi B. C. Cardi. Cardi. What she she does that shit? Cardi? Yeah, man. Hey. I listen to a lot of music. And then one day, my car stereo broke it broke. And then that was the best thing that ever could have happened to me because at that point I had a two hour commute each way. Down to LAX. I lived in the Valley, the San Fernando Valley at the time. I had to drive down to LAX 
hour and a half to two hours each way, then a nine hour plus job at, like in between then, you know? And I, at the time I said, damn, I don't want to pay any money to get my stereo fixed because like money was a little tighter back then. And then I just started listening to like audiobooks and YouTube 24 seven and just like finance and investing and Jim Rohn and, and improvement. And this is the best thing that ever happened to me. A, a curse, like a blessing disguised as a curse. And then I just got hooked, man. I figured out that like, yo, like all these songs are tight and I can listen to it when I want to stunt, when I want to catch a vibe, when I'm chilling with the homies. But when I'm by myself, what am I doing for me? Because I was given sometimes 60 to 70 hour, 50, 60, 70 hour weeks to a, a job and I'd come out with nothing for me. So then I started waking up at 5 a.m., paying myself first, paying myself first. Before I gave the company the best hours of my life, I started learning for myself first. Are you doing that or are you just going to your job day in and day out, making someone else rich? Like you, These are the ways you got to think of it. How am I going to fit it in? I got to get it in or else I'm never going to go where I want to go. How am I going to get it in? Do I got to give up my weekends? Do I got to give up my sleep? Do I got to give up my lunches? Do I got to put an ear pod in my ear during work? What I got to do? How much do you want it? Information has never been freer than it is now. It is. It hasn't been. You can reach the world's best investors with a click of a button. It's there. Can you make the time? Because there was a point in, in the world where there, were, there weren't that many books and people couldn't read. We all can read. We can't be the books. Not We don't even need books. We don't even got to read. We can listen to it now. It's, it's as simple as a bedtime story. But can you make the time? 43 people, what's up? Best thing I did was start listening to talk radio. Need to keep my attention span up. Can't be... No goldfish. Yeah, yeah. And you start, it, shit starts wandering off. You're like, bring it back. Got to bring it back, man. But find people you like to listen to, too. I don't like to listen to everyone. There's people who I like, made me feel a way. Like, I felt either something in common with them. I like the way they thought. I always thought they are very interesting. You got to find those teachers. All teachers aren't effective for all students. That's why they're different teachers. I thought decentralized tech wouldn't need regulation. Yeah, but like we're in an in-between period. You know how it is. You got the traditional world meet, meeting the decentralized world. And people aren't going to go from centralized to decentralized with a snap of a button super confident with it. Like governments aren't going to feel confident in it right away. We're in a transitionary period. Will the future be decentralized? Yes, I think it will. But that will come with time. You know, we're going from a completely centralized the user has limited rights to the user has all the rights and and no control. You think governments are going to be okay with letting go of control? No. It's going to take a period of time where we're going to have these hybrid systems. That's just my take on it. 44 people. Have you planned your exit prices for next upcoming bull run? What's your method of deciding when to exit for a coin? If your total investment went to 1 million, how much of that would you sell? Oh, I plan for it to do that. But um, like, so I told you to watch my four-year cycle video. It's kind of like time, right? Like November, December, I'm looking to exit most of my positions. I'm going to leave 20% in Bitcoin because it goes down less. 20 to whatever, 20 to 10%. Some people say 20 is kind of a lot. Okay, that's up to you. Just know that I'm I'm taking most of it out. 20 to 10% in Bitcoin, right? Just in case I'm wrong, cycle runs up farther or we do a reset and now Bitcoin's worth 10 million. I st I'm still in that money, you know? If that happens, hyperinflation happens, everything go starts mooning crypto and stays up forever, then the, the 10 to 20% that I keep in the crypto is still gonna be a shitload. It's gonna be a lot, probably enough to live off of, right? Because $10 million of Bitcoin, that's, Dang, you don't need that much Bitcoin at that point. You know, but watch my four-year video, November, December. 
if you really want to push it, you can start like early January. That's when a lot of altcoins were actually at their highest. But then again, you're starting to ride on the knife's edge. I don't really pick prices. I like to do time, right? Because I'm identifying times when the market the market cap is highest. The most money is in the space. That's when prices should be very high. But, you know, market cap liquidity, it sloshes around like liquid. It goes from Bitcoin Cash to XRP. To, it moves around. Different coins moon at different times. Instead of trying to have 30 different plans for 30 different coins, you can just pick a point in time when the price is supposed to be pretty high. It might not be the highest. You know what I'm saying? Because I have like 30 coins, man. I can't be managing that shit individually. That's crazy. Maybe if you have like a couple coins, then I get it. But that's not me. I can't read. Hey, you don't got to. You got YouTube. I, I don't read very well either. That's my thing. Like I can't read a book, like 10 pages in a book. I can't. I'd be listening to YouTube all day through work, through my breaks, on my weekends, when I'm cleaning the house. I'm listening to YouTube all the time. YouTube is a great equalizer, in my opinion, especially for people who can't read very well. I got an earbud in at work now. Compound, release the version of the protocol that is centralized and know your customer anti-money laundering compliant. Hmm, interesting. That's why I like listening to you. I pay attention for this whole time. You are here. This is my pra uh, practice as well. This is my Sunday school. There you go. Cool, man. I'm not for everyone. A lot of people hate my style. I don't care. I'm not I'm not here for them. I'm here for the people who could hear. Convert to BC BTC as market tops out. Um yeah, I mean it depends on your vision of the future, right? Like I gave you my plan. Doesn't mean that has to be your plan. It's just a resource. I'm just a data point, right? But if you're converting all your profits from alts to BTC and you keep it in BTC, then you're pretty much saying you don't believe in a four-year cycle and BTC is going to be like the standards, like the super cycle. That's basically what you're saying if you keep it all in BTC, right? I'm going to take out you know, a good amount in stable coins and then transition my increased purchasing power into other assets real estate, land, whatever, right? Keep some stable coins too. Going to use Nexos to get yield to help pay for expenses off that. Different things, staking coins, whatever. You just spread it around using a stable coin purchasing power. And then I'm going to keep that 10 to 20% in Bitcoin in case I'm wrong. I'm hedging my bet. I don't believe in all or nothing. You guys know me. I'm always hedging myself. 48 people, what's up? My guilty pleasure is anime while studying, but even from the strengths of the fire, from that strengthens the fire. Now I got the will of Naruto, grind at all costs. I like anime too. I'm not saying you guys shouldn't be doing anything fun. I'm just saying to pay yourself first. I mean, take it seriously, just like you take your job seriously, just like you take your entertainment and your free time seriously. This is a very important aspect in case, if you have aspirations for something greater for yourself. If you don't, if you like your life, it, I don't think you would be here. If you didn't want something more, I don't think you would be here. And I'm not saying that's wrong. There's different people. Some people like the way their life is, and that's awesome. Great for them. They win. But if you find yourself wanting more, I'm just here to tell you it takes more. Ladies and gentlemen, just use a stop limit order instead of trying to one the market. You also got to be willing to take a loss and set it low so you don't get stopped out. Then continuously adjust. Yeah. yeah. If you want to do the automated thing, you can. If if you have a problem with like guilt, I mean not guilt, um greed leaking in there and messing with your mind and like like if you know that's you, yeah, automated stuff can be the solution. Take yourself out of the equation. Instead of trying to time the market. Trying to get the tops, man. That sounds good on paper. It's just hard to do in reality. Just saying. That's why I'm telling you. Record your percentages. I didn't get the top, but I got a 30x. So um, I'm not that mad about it. 
You know, like you put, come on, man. You put a thousand bucks in on a coin. It goes up 30 X. You get 30,000 now. How could you even be mad at that? How could you be mad at that? Like, where does that ever happen? <laughs> Nowhere. What percent you have in fiat versus crypto? I mean, I got I got my livable expenses in crypto. I mean, um, in uh, fiat. That's about it, right? What I need to get through probably the next four months, five months, and then the rest is in crypto, heavy in crypto. 10% fiat, 90% crypto here, LOL. Yeah. Because like my swing trade positions, like that I want to swing, they're they're already in crypto. When they when they appreciate, I'll sell, then I'll have more fiat, and then I'll transition it, rotate it. You know, but right now I'm already I've already set my traps. So like I don't have any dry powder to be like, oh, get in. Like, no, nah, I'm already in it. My my shit's already set. When it comes up, I'll incrementally have more fiat along the way. I'll continue to reinvest it. But once you start getting into like, you know mid-November and stuff, or even early November, I'm going to start being a lot more judici judicious about deploying that capital. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I don't want to run the risk of reinvest, 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 got caught by 60% on the way down. It's like, it's not worth it to me. 44 people, what's up? Typical crashes are 40 to 50% of bull markets, so I, it could happen again before we even reach the top of the cycle. It could. It could, but also, you know, the say that comes in what October, November. You know how it gets very choppy at the end. November. I don't know if I want to buy that dip. I don't even want a chance getting caught on the backside. You know, like I don't know if that's worth it. The risk, the risk starts to get less and less attractive to me. And I, right now, I'm more, I'm okay with risk because I think we have some more time to go. I got time on my side, but as time starts shrinking down on me. I'm like, uh, I'm doing okay. Like, you know, I'm going to start backing off of it. I just think that's like a good way to mit mitigate your risk. Think about how much longer we have according to the four-year cycle. If you have like, you know, right now it's the risk of the cycle ending to me is very low. Because we see the four-year cycle playing out. Like Bitcoin hasn't crashed into 20,000 yet. Like a lot of people said, it's starting to round up. It's starting to go up. That indicates to me that the four-year cycle is on track. That's not financial advice, but you hear what I'm saying? I got time on my side. Almost two hours. Damn, my throat is... I second, you can't read. I know I write while high, but you're sober, I think. Down low a reader and let that read for you. Huh. Oh, Ziki be an asshole. <laughs> Thanks, Ziki. So if you, uh, if something goes nuts and rises like crazy, you don't have to sell anything. You just raise your stop limit. Do you think ETH has topped out? Oh, no. Did you watch my... Did you watch my four-year cycle? I don't know. Watch my four-year cycle, man. Bought Zcash for 100x. Any word on this amendment thing? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Okay, guys, but it's been kind of long. This is Crypto and Coffee. I do this every Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I also do a second live stream on Wednesdays, Crypto Kickback, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We just go through some stuff. We talk about stuff, look at some macro charts, altcoins, all that good stuff. Um, hold on. Hold on, this is a good one. How will you go about being rich? Like if you buy a Lamborghini, your friends will know, and then you'll expect to pay for everything, which leads to problems, or will you just appear normal? Um, are you saying you don't want your friends to know? You I have a crypto channel, bro. Like <laughs> If crypto goes up, people are going to freaking know, you know, but like, I, I'm not like a big one to like brag if that's what you're saying. I, I'm not interested in Lamborghinis. That's never interested me. 
I'm like a king, man. I want to increase my acreage. My ounces. That's what I like. But yeah. Yeah, man. Um, do this every every week. Thanks for joining, guys. It's been fun. Um, crypto's starting to turn around again. Should be good. I'm excited for the end of the year. Going to get that Moonboy Lambo vibes going again. I know every, everyone, it's been kind of hard. That dip was scary as hell. It always is mid-cycle. That's why I put out that video, though. Hopefully that helps ease some concerns. Just know that with great risk comes great reward and vice versa. You can't have a lot of gains without a lot of uncertainty along the way. But until next time, guys, it's been fun. Talk to you later. Peace.